Here you can see this pipe used to come all the way across and run up to this outlet and that's what I used on my car. Um, what I've done differently now is the pipe has been diverted because I needed some more height uh, and it runs to this panel I put in. It's a sub panel. Um, ironically it got filled up really quickly uh, and it has four breakers in it. So if you come down this path you'll see there's a 20 amp GFCI. Uh, most garages just seem to have one outlet. Uh, mine had two, but I've used this as a chance to put another one in. And then if you follow it down past the air coupler, you can see the welding um, plug. This is a dryer outlet. Uh, I believe it's actually a 50 amp plug, which should get changed because it's no longer 50 amps. But uh, that's the 30 amp and the 20 amp. From there, um, it goes up and I put a contactor in and you're probably wondering what this is doing. This contactor is going to be used to turn the heater on and off um, because the heater is going to live about 20 feet, 16 to 20 feet in the air. And so to do that I put the contactor in so that it can open and close uh, the circuit. 30 amps is no problem. And what I did is I actually ran this to a Z-Wave switch as well. My whole house is run on Z-Wave. So this gives me a couple options. Um, the plus is I've got a temperature sensor. I'll put it at the top of the roof. Uh, it's actually, no, it's already there. Uh, it's in the smoke detector and it will tell me the temperature of the garage. So should the garage get down to 40, that's when this will throw the switch on. Um, throwing the contactor, which will put power to the heater. So that then runs upwards where I'm put, putting in a box, a junction box. I'm going to put another outlet in there as well, a 20 amp, and most likely put a fan up there as well in the future. And then I'm going to run another pipe over um, that I can run to my lift leg to power the, the um, pump. So that's kind of the high level of what I'm trying to do. I will say there's going to be one disadvantage to this, and I looked at a few ways of doing this. Using this contactor will turn off the fan as well as the unit. Ideally, I would want to run a second contactor to keep the fan on after this unit goes off. Um, I looked at doing a, a another contactor and a time delay switch. Honestly, the problem was I landed up in a situation where I'd spend another $100 trying to get a $70 heater to work. So we're going to give it a shot, see what happens. I only plan on running this thing on the 3000 watt setting, but we'll see what happens. Um, and so what we'll do next is we'll get up, mount the bracket, run some wire in the conduits, and get ready to mount the heater up. Essentially, you see me fumbling around moving the wires um, from the top to the bottom. I do not have a fish tape. Uh, I've got those fiber sticks, but they don't really work in conduits. And so that should be the completed contactor wiring. Um, looks good. No real issue, no issues. And we'll just close this up and that will stay closed. So now onwards to the top.
right, so we're going to start with, uh, let's start with the 220 breaker. And that controls this one over here. And as I probe the plug, keep you on that. Dryer plugs are a little difficult to get sometimes. Especially with one hand. Two hundred and forty-five volts, so that's pretty good. Okay, that means our sub panel is working. Let's check the one ten next. And to that, we have a twenty amp breaker. So we'll flick that, and you can see I have a light plugged in, and so that works. Since it's GFCI, let's test. Oh, it's nice red button light okay next we will fire the 15 um, amp and that controls the light here and so before we turn on the heater this is the control for the contactors and this is a z-wave switch okay so let's hit the heater let's keep that off first at this point we should have power running to the contactor. So let's see what happens. At that point we have a uh, voltage. You can actually feel the thing is quite hot. I'm going to adjust the louvers. But that's going to complete the project. Um, thanks for watching. It actually does have a bit of an echo, but I think that's the louver. Uh, let me check that quickly. All I'll do is we'll turn that off. We'll basically louver it up and try and keep the heat from coming down. Um, not that silent, but uh, something gross. Next, um, I'm going to go into add a thing here, and you can see I have my switch. Rename device. go. So now I should be able to come into my list, garage heater, and I will be able to turn it on or off remotely. And so that's going to complete the project. Uh, probably some of the next things to do will be to add um, the temperature sensor and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if interested in finding out more uh, of his home endeavors. Thanks.